So the big question is, as a precious metals trader, is which way are we going to break out of this, this topping or this consolidation phase eventually? If we break to the downside, then this, this bull market's definitely over. It's going to consolidate for potentially a year or three or four. Could could fall out of favor for a while. If it breaks to the upside, then we're going the you know 2,700, 3,400, 5,400, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna hit this phase right here where play, price goes parabolic. Physical silver and gold in your hands, personal service, competitive prices, and zero complaints. That's Miles Franklin. Call us at 1-800-822-8080 or email us at info at milesfranklin.com. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with the Miles Franklin Market Update. And back with us today is Chris Vermeulen from the thetechnicaltraders.com. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Elijah. Definitely. It's great to have you. And yeah, actually, our interviews have been some of the most popular on our channel. And I really wanted to have you back on to get an update of where we are in gold and silver. So there's the there's the daily chart of gold. And this goes back all the way to about 2002. So 2002 is actually when we started uh, the last kind of commodity super cycle. We were in a very similar scenario to this. We had just come out of a major tech heavy bull market and technology stocks. Real estate was through the roof and uh, and commodities were the most undervalued kind of asset out there. We are back in the scenario where commodities were undervalued over here. We're back in that stage right here where commodities are at that same level of being undervalued. So we're just starting a new super cycle. And you could look at this whole thing. You've had the, the first half of the super cycle where you get that big appreciation stage and then it kind of flounders and goes out of favor. And we're just kind of warming up. We're just on the infancy stage here of breaking to a much larger cycle that could take silver to or sorry, gold to twenty six hundred. 3,700, you know, 5,400, like we're just on the verge of something potentially very big. So let's just look at this chart. Now, if we were to look at the moving averages and just um, zoom in a little bit here, uh, you can see that the green line is the 200 day moving average. The blue line is the 50 day. And, and you know, typically people say if something's pulled back, you know, 20 percent, we're usually in a bear market. Well, gold pulled back 20 percent from the, the high to the low. We're also below the 200 day moving average, which means, you know, we're really not that favorable. And ideally, we want to get into this scenario just like we saw back here in, in 2018, where price gets above the 200 day moving average. We also want the 50 day to get above the 200 day moving average. And that's when you have a super bull market kind of leg to the upside. And so we're pretty far from that. We're still several months of, of moving averages trying to come together and then for price to break above. And and this is kind of the big standout point right here. If you look at this chart, uh, you can see we had this crossover over here back in, in 2008, 2009, where it kind of broke above and then had this massive run. Well, we had that right over here. And so we've kind of we're we're in this first initial run. Now I think this this phase that we're in over the last couple of months is really only something like this. We're we're still at the lower end of this spectrum. We still have this big blow off top where we could see metals take off. But where we are right now, this box here where we're under the 200 day moving average is very similar to where we are right here. So we are flirting right here equivalent uh, right now. So we still have to see gold come up and take a look at this. Look at this high on the chart. This We had a huge high and then it sold off and had a rebound high, crashed again, rebounded to that same level and then sold off. Well, we got the exact same scenario happening right now. We had the high, it crashed, it bounced up, it crashed, it bounced up and we're right back in that scenario. So the big question is, as a precious metals trader, is which way are we going to break out of this, this topping or this consolidation phase eventually. If we break to the downside, then this, this bull market's definitely over. It's gonna consolidate for potentially a year or three or four, could could fall out of favor for a while. If it breaks to the upside, then we're going the, you know, 2,700, 3,400, 5,400, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna hit this phase right here where play, price goes parabolic. So that's where we are from like a big standpoint. We are not in the clear for gold, you know, to skyrocket. There's a lot of work to be done 
Uh, but if this does start to go higher, you can see the upside potential and where we are in the overall super cycle. We're still, you know, two, three, four years of, of appreciation if this is uh, correct. Now, you mentioned the possible downside for gold. If we look at the last time, kind of we see we're seeing a repeat of this, um, the consolidation we saw back in 2011, 12, 13, and then it it hit a low around, I think, below 1100. So do you see that as a possibility, like a possible uh, downside for gold to go that low? It's a possibility. I, I think if gold was to break down, I think we could go all the way back down to around 1370, 1400. I think that's it's a possibility. Obviously, none of us want that. But, uh, you know, you can never rule an option out. It, the markets like to do what you least expect. Uh, at least when you got longer term trends on your side, it puts the odds in your favor. And then you zoom into the shorter term trends and you can play it more actively. Uh, but, you know, you got to be aware that this could very easily break to the downside. This level is going to be very critical. If we if we close below, you know, 16, you know, 85, somewhere in there, uh, uh, it could be kind of lights out all the way back down to 1400. So just that is an option. Right. And that's a, if it does break those levels, you know, it might be a point to uh, uh, potentially you know, put metals on the sideline for a while until they build a new base and, and have this run. This first run was amazing for uh, for appreciation, but now it needs to get traction here and break to the upside. And if we do see a break to the upside, like what kind of time frame do you see uh, for prices? For example, the 26, 700 you were talking about and also uh, the possible like 5,000 plus. Yeah. So if we were to just look at this type of uh, of, of price pattern here, I would think um, this year, we see gold break the the high over here of around 28, uh, 2085, somewhere in there, and then start to head up to that 2700 level. I don't think it's going to happen right away. I think it's going to be, um, if you look at this last trend, it, it lasted one and a half years. And so, you know, we're looking forward into 2022. It would probably be like 2,700. You never know if something's going to spike and take off or if it's going to grind its way up. But just last time, it, it took its kind of time to move up and it took a year and a half. So this is a major pattern um, and major patterns just take time, right? They're pretty boring, but uh, so that's where it goes. When you look at the, the, the upside potential, we can just look at the low down here. We can use Fibonacci extension and grab these levels and, and it'll give us our upside momentum target which is is roughly uh 20 2600 for gold to the upside and again that's probably in the next year year and a half uh time frame uh the, the you know looking at 3400 and 5400 those would be kind of calculated after we see the run to this 26 2700 range uh how long it takes to get there and then the type of pullback and then you can start to gauge on on the cycle for that i would think that would be like three four years out but um you kind of got to take a one bull market leg at a time and then recalibrate the timing now as for silver if we could get an update on that market sure yeah take a look at silver uh metals are down today they did have a nice rally uh or they've had a nice rally um silver's uh, been holding up a lot better than gold and gold uh silver miners as well have been holding up better than the gold miners um Pretty noisy chart. It's all over the place. Silver loves to have these great big green bars or gaps or big red bars. It's very jumpy, very sensitive. Uh, but silver is uh, it's above the 50 day. It's also above the 200 day. It's holding a really strong bull market trend. And uh, that's a good sign that it's it's got some leadership here. So I like silver. I, th I think it's going to go. Um, I think we're looking at like 37, 36, 37 dollars an ounce. And that would be later this year. This pattern's taken a long time. It's gone from March to March um, to where we are kind of now. So, you know, we're still looking out late this year. We could end up going into uh, that $36, $38 an ounce level. So do you see, um, I know we've talked about in the past that if it breaks above $30, it could be off to the races. So your, your target is around 37, you said 36, 37. Yeah, and that, thir that 30 level is going to be a, a pretty critical line in the sand. That's where it topped out, uh, you know, mid last year. It's where we had the the short squeeze spike in the media, everybody wanting it to do that short squeeze. The media got in and 
Uh, that was another major resistance area. So when we break 30, I mean, it should really pick up speed to the upside. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people will jump on board a lot like what we saw last uh, last July, where when it started to break out of a very significant level, it just starts to go parabolic and has the next big rally. And silver, that's what silver does. It kind of goes dormant, really choppy, tough to trade. And then suddenly it just takes off. And uh, if you're not on it, you kind of missed it. So probably fifty dollars silver in twenty twenty is unlikely. Uh yeah, I don't I don't see that happening. There'd have to be like a short squeeze and something crazy to happen, but uh, that's a that's a pretty far distance. Requires some pretty big herd mentality shift, uh, which I just don't I don't see that really happening at this point. And if we kind of consider the downside potential for gold, you know, you said around thirteen hundred or so, it could fall to possibly. Is there a lot of downside for silver right now? Yeah, there is. I think we could see silver back at, at 21, 22. It's a pretty critical level where we've seen support a few times before. Um, silver kind of broke out. There's two breakout levels on silver. One of them was at this um, 1875 area. Another one was at around 21. Um, so I, I think if it was to break down and gold does the full-fledged kind of sell-off and break down, I think silver would do the same thing. It would come all the way back down to the breakout zone where the bull market started for silver last year. Um, which could be all the way down to, you know, 18, 1875 to that uh, $21 range. It could fall the, down there. And that's a pretty good little slide. I mean, from where we are right now, you know, that's a 28% haircut uh, in the price of silver. But it would actually wouldn't be a, a really bearish thing on the chart longer term. Still, silver would have a very strong chart. Gold is still going to have a very strong chart if it goes to 1400 it's a, it's a bigger bull flag we're still in a super cycle so these are still okay things long term but uh, short term obviously anyone in there is going to be under some pressure now one of the things that people say is causing this recent rally in the last really since the beginning of april for gold and silver is a bit of weakness in the bond market and also the dollar what is your perspective on on those markets Right. So I've got a, an ETF here that mimics the dollar to some extent. And I'm just going to go to uh, I'll go to the monthly chart and we'll just take a quick look here. Uh, the U.S. dollar is is kind of trading in this really big range. It's a pretty gnarly range. We we're just kind of draw a box there. Uh, the dollar has been in a pretty strong downtrend. Obviously, a, a lot of people are expecting the dollar to continue to fall. Uh, it makes sense. There's all kinds of printing going on. Um, to me, when when the dollar breaks the the 2018 lows, that's when we're going to see precious metals, I think, and other commodities go really completely parabolic and, and just start to take off. I think that's going to be a huge unwinding event. Now, if we're lucky, we'll, we would see the U.S. dollar come down to these lows. And by that time, we're probably seeing gold, silver and miners all testing those breakout areas from these large multi-year bull flags that they're they're forming and then when it actually breaks below it that's when everything skyrockets and, and rallies the timing will probably be, be pretty close in terms of where the dollar is when it breaks down that'll be like metals having that starting that next major super cycle leg to the upside so i'm, I'm pretty excited about it i think the dollar is going to continue to be under pressure for a while um but um it, it's holding up. It's 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 in this big range. So not a whole lot going on there. When we look at the bond market, so if we look at TLT, which is the 20-year bond market, uh, it's been out of favor. It's had a huge collapse in price. It's right back down to where it was pre-COVID. So that level of fear has kind of dissipated. It's completely gone. People are back to normal where bonds are. But bonds are just starting to put in a bottoming formation. If we actually look at the daily chart, you get a really good feel of of where bonds are. If I was to just show you um, pre-COVID, this was 2019 over here. It was in this falling down trend. Um, we saw, uh, you know, bonds out of favor. Investors weren't uh, really interested in that. They wanted to hold stocks, but we start to see bonds break out uh, pretty early. And this is just before COVID really hit. Well, we're, we've been in this massive downtrend for a while now, and, and bonds are just about to break out of this bottoming formation. It's about to get above the 50-day moving average. Uh, and, and so this, to me, is also when we're going to see precious metals start to shine. There's a certain amount of fear creeping into the market, and that's that's got people saying, you know what? I'm starting to buy bonds. I'm going to liquidate some of my, my stocks. A lot of the leaders from last year, the equities, aren't performing anymore. So they're starting to move to bonds. They're starting to move into gold. 
And of course, they're moving into the, the miners and, and we're seeing this pop in precious metals sector just because there's some fear creeping in. And uh, that's usually a sign we're going to see metals continue to go higher probably for another month or two. And, um, and then we'll see where it goes from there. So that's really interesting. It is bonds and and gold are both seen as kind of a safe haven asset. And if if the bond market uh, rallies, then so does gold is what you're saying. Yeah, to, to some extent. And it's kind of funny because uh, so many people call precious metals a safe haven. And in fact, I, I did really up till, you know, late last year. But when you look at how much volatility are in even bonds and precious metals, there really isn't a safe haven. Like one of my investing strategies is we actually, when you don't want to be in stocks, sometimes you don't even want to be in bonds. Like when you look at this market, uh, the bond market, you know, collapsed 25%. Who would have thought your bonds would lose 25% in value, right? Very volatile. Gold's down 20%. I mean, those aren't safe havens. There's very, there's small windows in the stock market when it goes out of favor, bonds do well and precious metals do well. But when there's actual uh, some of these big shifts in sentiment, they're actually not that much of a safe haven. It's one of the things I try to explain to followers is sometimes you don't even want to be in the stock market and sometimes you don't even want to be in precious metals or bonds. You're actually best just sitting in cash at some time at some points. And it's really important because sometimes they all crash together and um, they all fall 20 percent very easily. And they tend to fall at the same time in most cases. And why is that? Is it because during maybe crises, people just liquidate everything or why? Why would why would gold in the stock market and bonds fall at the same time? Yeah, it, it you know it happens over and over again. Every time we have panic selling, like complete panic, like in in COVID, there was an initial pop in bonds, a big spike, but it only lasted really two big days, and then bonds collapsed fifteen uh, percent over like a you know six or seven day window. Um, gold did the same thing; it completely collapsed. Silver. Let's just take a quick look at gold. What did gold do um, during that window? What it is is it's panic selling, and when people are in a panic, especially. Uh, COVID, which was bigger than normal, people were actually fearful that they were potentially going to die. They didn't care what the heck was in their portfolio. They liquidated everything, bonds, precious metals, like gold, which is a very slow moving asset, fell 14% in, in a two week window. Uh, silver, it uh, it fell quite a bit as well. If I uh, just pull that crash up here, silver fell, you know, 36, 37%. So they're not a safe haven. They're an opportunity when they're primed and ready and they're a good play. Now, I like precious metals as a long-term hedge, obviously, against dollar, inflation, all those things. That's a totally different play. If you're someone who's trading them, they're not really a safe haven. There's times when you want to own them and times when you don't want to own them. So it's just, a you know, so many people see it, call it a safe haven. But if it was safe, you wouldn't lose 35, 37% of your value over a two-week window, right? <laughs> I think that's a good point. And the distinction between trading the metals versus holding the physical kind of as insurance for the long term against dollar devaluation. And another thing that our viewers are keenly interested in right now as an alternative for the dollar uh, are cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And we've seen really since the end, beginning of the year such a rally in Bitcoin up to about uh, 63, 64,000. Uh, but we're actually seeing a pullback around around 20%. What do you make of the recent pullback we're, we're seeing in Bitcoin? Yeah, so the recent pullback is, isn't really anything out of the norm. If we look at the daily chart here and we look at the, the pullbacks that we've seen recently, uh, this pullback over here was a 30% pullback. The next one here was roughly 21. We had one over here is roughly 15. And where we are right now, it's about 17. So there's not a whole lot out of the norm. The, the trend is still up. Obviously, it's running out of some momentum here because it keeps it's rallying and then pulling back quicker. Uh, we're getting we're getting to the 50 day moving average. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Now, this type of chart pattern is really, really volatile. We don't know which way it's going to fully break. If we were to just draw a couple trend lines on here. Um, these trend lines right across here and this one here, you can see I was kind of getting squeezed. Don't worry about those percentages, but it's kind of running up in this point. It, it has broken down below those lows and it's flirting with the 50 day. So to me, Bitcoin could fall very, very quickly to that 35, 
30,000, it could unwind super fast. But this type of chart pattern is kind of also like a running correction in terms of uh, it's actually building energy and it's actually going to take off and skyrocket and it's going to go to like 74 and then like 100,000. And you don't know which way this is really going to break. The trend is up. Um, so the odds are it's going to try to rally here. But, uh, you know, it's it's a real crapshoot uh, trading this type of pattern. And a lot of times what it's going to do is, is a big fake out. For example, it broke below this, this little trend line here. People are probably getting nervous and then it's going to skyrocket and go higher. Typically, whichever way it breaks out of that channel, it usually goes the other way afterwards. So what it's doing is everyone who is excited and long in here owning it, they get they get nervous and they get out here. And then suddenly this thing takes off without them. And on the flip side, this type of pattern loves to do this. It'll pop to the upside and break out, get you really excited, get new people long, and then it rolls over and it crashes harder than you've ever seen. So this pattern is really deadly. The fact that it's kind of popped down here, it's at the 50 day, people are getting a little bit nervous. I kind of feel like it might want to really go into that super rally kind of parabolic top, which when that reverses, that'll be the end of the trend for a few years. Just like we saw in 2018, you have that final blow off capitulation move and and then it fizzles out and takes years to to rebuild a new base and then it repeats and does this again. So we got to see which way it's going to break here. Now, are you trading Bitcoin right now? Or, I mean, it seems like it's very it's a very difficult situation because we don't really know which way it's going to break. Yeah, I, I, I own some and I kind of just do the same thing as I have with physical bullion. I just buy some and I just sit on it and it, I don't have a lot. It's really just there to, to, to own some and see what happens with it. I mean, obviously, um, I'm kind of at the point where it'd be great just to sell it. I mean, if we get a parabolic spike and we see this push up, I'll go dig out my numbers to go figure out how to find my Bitcoin and then I'll go cash it out and I'll probably reload later at another time. But uh, I'd love to see the spike and that'll be definitely the the red flag. If this rockets up to 75, you know, 85 and 100 or whatever, that to me is going to be kind of the end of it. If it does it in like a couple big green bars within a couple of weeks. Right. So that's what I'm looking for. This pattern has got a lot of opportunity if you catch that last move. Uh, but you're going to have to take action here soon. It's either get out because it's crashing or get out because it's just had that kind of final parabolic spike uh, before it comes back down to earth. All right. Well, Chris Vermeulen, thank you so much for your time today. Before we let you go, if our viewers are interested in hearing more of these interviews, they can hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so they'll be notified of all the new interviews coming out. And where can our viewers find you online if they're interested in learning more? So they can find me at uh, the technicaltraders.com and every day I do a morning video and report and, and walk through the markets just like you and I are doing typically on a bit shorter term time frame because we're checking to see what happened yesterday what's happening in pre-market and how things are going to move today but I walk you through you kind of learn technical analysis you really get a, a feel of the heartbeat of the stock market of you know when things are going to probably take off or roll over and if we need to be active in position so it's very educational. I cover metals all every morning and miners. And um, uh, yeah, I focus on trading mostly ETFs at this point with the newsletter. And uh, yeah. Any last thoughts before we let you go? Yeah, I think the big thing is to just take a look at the big picture of the overall kind of financial markets. And and stock markets are, are still in a full on bull market, but we're seeing signs of money moving into these defensive sectors. When you look at the performance of utilities, bonds, uh, precious metals or miners uh, compared to actually the SP 500, you're going to see they're actually like outperforming the stock market in many cases here. And, and that's not a that's not a really good sign for the stock market. This is a it means people are starting to get nervous holding stocks and they're looking for those defensive plays that uh, are going to are going to take kind of leadership. And that's where I think precious metals uh, fall into place here. I think we're going to see hopefully a really nice one to two month push in precious metals and miners. And uh, and then we'll see how it holds up after that push. But it could bring us up to those breakout levels that we're looking for uh, to start some new major bull market legs up. So exciting times ahead over the next one to two months. Awesome. Chris, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. Thanks for having me, Elijah. Take care. Physical silver and gold in your hands. Personal service competitive prices, and zero complaints. That's Miles Franklin. Call us at 1-800-822-8080 or email us at info at milesfranklin.com.